Greetings, my brethren. I am so glad that I can come to you and bring to you words from the Word. I trust that as we share words from the Word, that your heart is encouraged daily and that you are helped from the Word of God. And I want to thank you for sharing with others, for you could never tell by you sharing what God will do. I call your attention to Matthew chapter 27. And we continue to look at this matter I have sent. And I've often asked, had you ever reached a place in your life that you have acknowledged, Lord, I have sinned. Lord, forgive me of my sin. If you have not, please remember, the scripture teaches for all have sinned, Romans 3.23, and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. It is so important for those words to come from our mouth. I know as human beings, sometimes we, we don't want to acknowledge that we are wrong. But the Bible said, if we acknowledge, if we confess sin, He's faithful. He's just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So in the song by Fanny Crosby, Redeem How I Love to Proclaim It, she said, Redeem and so happy in Jesus. No language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of His presence with me doth continually dwell. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem, redeem His child and forever I am. After we have reached the place in our lives where we could admit I have sinned, He said He will forgive. He came to be our Redeemer, to forgive us of our sins. It was the man Judas. Judas, being a disciple of Jesus, betrayed our Lord for 30 pieces of silver. When he saw he was condemned, he brought back the 30 pieces of silver. And he also used the words, I have sinned. In Matthew 27, reading verse 1, the Bible said, When the morning was come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned, and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple, and departed, and went out, and hung himself. He realized that what he did was wrong. But true repentance would not have allowed him to go and hang himself. Yeah, many of us, we need to reach that place in our lives and to say, I have sinned. As we look at these men, every devotion, I shared a character with you. As we look at them, as they acknowledge they have sinned, there's yet another tragedy. It would seem to me that only three of those men who confessed were sincere enough to receive forgiveness of a gracious Lord. What I say to you right now, these men were no worse than you and I, because to be honest, the Bible clearly teaches that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every man, woman, Boy or girl, whether we want to admit it or not, all have sinned. In Romans 5, 12, the Bible teaches, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. In 1 John 1, 8, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar 
and his word is not in us. First John 1.10 Notice, we can look at sin and we can look at the gospel. As we go to Ma- Matthew and we look at chapter 4 and verse number 16, the Bible said, The people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and them that sat in the region and the shadow of death, light is sprung up. I say to you, sin is a disease, but glory to God. The gospel is light. The gospel is health. Sin is a disease. Sin is darkness. The gospel is light. And Psalms 119 verse 105, Thy word is a light unto thy feet, a lamp unto thy feet, and a light unto thy path. Let me say that again. Thy word is a lamp unto thy feet, and a light unto thy path. If you want to know how to travel safe through this life, we need the word of God. In John chapter number 1, verse 4 to 9, he tells us also about the Word being a light. The Word of God is a light. I want to thank God for the light that is in the Word of God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. For there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to be a witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to be a witness of the light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. What am I trying to say? Sin is darkness. But guess what? The gospel is light. Sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But the gospel is life. In John 10 and verse number 10, the Bible said, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that ye might have life, and that ye might have it more abundantly. In John 11 and verse 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And in John chapter 14 and verse number 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What am I saying? I am saying sin is a debt. The gospel cancels debt. Sin is deceitful. The gospel is truth. Sin brings disaster. The gospel gives peace. Sin despair. The gospel gives hope. Sin destroys. The gospel builds. Sin divides. The gospel is a fellowship. Sin dominates. The gospel liberates. Sin is a disaster. The gospel is submission. Sin has been defeated and we have been delivered. I thank God today that each one of us can reach to the place in our lives and say, I have sinned. What God does with our sin when we trust Him as Lord and Savior, what He does. In Micah chapter 7 and in verse number 19, I will cast all thy sins into the depths of the sea. God, when we ask Him to come into our hearts and to forgive us of our sins, when we acknowledge, I have sinned, He takes all those sins away from us and He casts them in the depths of the sea. My Bible tells me He will remember them no more. In Jeremiah 31 verse 34, I will forgive their iniquity and I'll remember their sins no more. Oh, my friend, these are the days. If you would have done anything considered to be wrong and others know about it, 
boy, even though God forgives you of that, some people hold that against you. If you've been in prison, if you kill somebody and you give your life to Christ, they would see you as a martyr and not as a Christian. But when God forgives a martyr of his or her sin, that person is no longer considered a martyr. That person is now a child of God, a born again believer. God forgives of that sin and God remember those sins no more. In Hebrews 8, 12, For I'll be merciful to the unrighteousness and to their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. What a mighty God we serve that He will not remember our sins and our transgressions that we have sinned against Him. This can only be done by God only, He has the power to forgive. Today, if you will come to Him and ask Him to forgive you, if you would use those words, I have sinned, He will forgive you. If you are a child of God and you have walked out of His will, you are out of His way, if you would say to Him, I have sinned, God will forgive you of your sin and put you back in fellowship with Him. I trust that these words would not be too hard to come from our mouth when we are wrong, that we will confess our sin, because in confessing, He's faithful, He's just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May God bless you as you go out today and live your life to bring honor and glory to the Lord. And may God bless you as you share these devotions with your friends and your families. Do have a great day.